and welcome to another episode of Ubar. Today I want to talk about Amazon Cognito and how you can get started using it. We will learn the basic concepts and get started with AWS CDK. Most web apps need some kind of authentication and authorization. And there are many ways to provide that kind of features and services to your applications in the modern apps. You can either build it yourself or consume it from some third party provider. Amazon Cognito is a managed serverless service that provides this authentication and authentication for your web applications, your mobile apps, and things like that. When we talk about Amazon Cognito, usually we talk about the two main features that it has, that is the user pools and the identity pools or federated identities. Amazon Cognito user pools is mainly for authenticating users. And what authentication means, means to verify that someone is who they say they are. Typical username and password or other authentication mechanisms. User pools are our user directory where users are stored and their authentication mechanisms are stored as well, either the password or whatever they're using to authenticate. You can authenticate username and password or by using other federated identities like Facebook, Amazon, Apple, whatever you like. User pools also have many features. They allow you to sign in, to register, to manage passwords. Uh, for example, the user forgot their password, they can reset it. That is all offered by the service. You can also add like validation by mail or SMS. So basically a message is sent to your phone or to your email that the user needs to confirm that the form and the email or the email are correct. That also handled by user uh, Cognito, user pools. Also, you can do multi-factor authentication and generate one-time passwords and generate one-time tokens that the user needs to input in some place. And that's also generated and handled by user pools. And you can customize all these workflows with Lambda functions. So for example, when a user is created, it can do many things and you can do Lambdas in, in the middle of that. If you would like me to do a video on kind of tweaking the workflows of Cognito, let me know in the comments and I can keep on adding to that. Basically, when a user is authenticated by the APIs, it gets a JWT token, JSON web token, and that can be used with other APIs to verify that the user has been authenticated. So that's kind of how user pools work. Then we have the user pool application client. That's a concept that we are going to use in a moment when we are creating these resources. And this is a concept from user pools that it's uh, basically for every application usually it's done by platform like web and Android, iOS, will have a different app client. And this is an entity that allows you to do some unauthenticated API calls like the signing or the registration or forget password. When the user is not uh, authenticated, you can do still some calls to Cognito because you need <laughs> to do that. The second part is the Amazon Cognito Identity Pools, Federated Identities. And the main purpose of this part is to do authorization, basically giving the users permissions to perform some actions in the different AWS resources. In this case, it will issue temporary AWS credentials to these users to access AWS services. So for example, you have a web page and you have pictures that are displayed there and those pictures are stored in S3 you need to give permissions uh, to that user to see the pictures. They want to call an API or like API Gateway or AppSync, and those users need to have permissions to invoke that API. You want them to, I don't know, invoke a Lambda function, they need to have permissions. So basically you can combine the user pools and identity pools together. So you have the user registry, they authenticate, they get a HWT token, and then they can also use the um, identity pool for give the AWS credentials. So you can also authenticate in the AWS services. But you can also use this identity pool with other services, other federated identities like Facebook, Google, Apple. So if you don't want to use Cognito, you can use something else to issue these temporary credentials. This service is very, very important for doing that because it automates all the process. So 
it's quite uh, quite useful even by itself. One important thing with uh, identity pools is that it works with two different types of users, the users that are authenticated and the ones that are guests or unauthenticated. So basically you can configure different permissions that these groups have uh, into the different AWS services. So for example, the uh, authenticated users can upload images to S3 while the unauthenticated users can only see it. So in that way, uh, you can have different APIs that can be invoked by one or the other, or basically the guests cannot invoke any API and they just can consume the static content. One cool thing about Cognito is the free tier that it has. It has this permanent free tier where you can have 50,000 uh, monthly active users. That's a lot of users because it's not the users that are stored, but the users that are registering, logging in and doing activities. So those are a lot of users. So this service is basically <laughs> run itself for free. So I recommend you to check the pricing page to learn how much the different features cost, but it's quite uh, convenient. So now I want to jump into the code to show you a demo on how you can build all these resources using uh, infrastructure as code. In this case, we are going to use CDK. So you can configure the user pool, the app client, the identity pool, the permissions for the different roles and so on and so forth. If you like this type of videos, like it, subscribe to get more because there is more coming about Cognito. There is more demos coming for backend and frontend and all that. So stay subscribed. So in this demo, I will just show you how to create a Cognito stack. I will not show you how the application is built. That's a different video, uh, but I will just show you how to create the different resources for Cognito. So I was going to create a Cognito stack. That is a stack that will only have resources for Cognito. And I'm exporting some things because I'm using this stack somewhere else. If you check my migration playlist, you will see this code being used. So I'm going to start by creating the user pool. And that's the first resource I want to create for Cognito. And here uh, I'm going to use the uh, basic configuration. So I'm going to have the capability that users can self-sign, meaning that they can register, that it sends an email for validation automatically. And the email is the thing that they are going to use as username. So that's what we are defining here. You can put more configurations. You can check the, the documentation for CDK to know all the properties or the documentation for Cognito to see what you can configure. But in this way, the user can put their username, they get an email and voila. Then we are going to use uh, to configure the user pool client. This is for my web application and basically I just pass the user pool and that will generate the client. It's very simple. And this is what we are going to use later on. Then we have the identity pool. And here I'm allowing unauthenticated uh, identities, basically guest users. And I'm also passing the user pool ID and the um, user pool client ID. So the two things that I just configured. So in that way, now my identity pool is configured, but we are missing the permissions. Now I need to give permissions to uh, the identity pool, authenticated users and out unauthenticated users. And for doing that, what I will do is to create some roles. So the first role I'm creating here is the anonymous, the unauthenticated role. And here, basically, you have to do some kind of um, assume by but some principle in this case, the identity pool, and then you need to mark it that is unauthenticated. And then in the inline policies, or you can do manage policies or whatever, uh, you can pass the policies, the access that you want to give to this user. In this example, it's just a uh, read and S3, but you can do whatever you want. And here is just I am policies. If you don't know anything about I am, let me know if you're interested in a video about I am and the basics of it. Then we do the same for the uh, Cognito authenticated role. And here uh, we can give different policies as well. I'm not giving anything in particular, but you can do uh, execute a Lambda, do whatever you want. So basically the policies are infinite. And then uh, finally, we are going to do the uh, Cognito identity pool role attachment, where we are going to attach the two roles, the authenticated and authenticated roles to the identity pool. And basically in that way, then everything is tied together. And you can see that the identity provider is also mapped there 
for the user uh, pool ID and also the client ID. So then all the concepts are kind of gathered here in this identity pool role attachment. So you don't need to do any manual work. When you deploy this, everything will be built for you. So if we want to see what happened, we can go to our AWS account and uh, go to Cognito and there you will see the user pool. We have two, but the one that was deployed two days ago is the latest one. And here you can see uh, the user pool name, the users, the list of users uh, that have been registered, the ERM, some of this information like the user pool ID is very, very handy. Then uh, you can basically have different groups. You can create admin and like whatever you need. Uh, for each of the users. Uh, if you open one user, you can see its information, like the different attributes, if it's confirmed or not, and all kind of information that you are passing in the registration. Then we have the signing experience, and here you can uh, define like, okay, can they register by itself? How they can register with email? Uh, it can be with SMS. And then also you can do different identity providers like Facebook or Google or whatever you like. Then the password policy, how complex the policy, the password needs to be. And I just leave the default that is <laughs> very complicated by itself. If you want them to have multi-factor um, authentication, how they can recover their account if they forget the password, they can have the self-enable recovery. And then um, basically that's kind of the, the whole signing. Then the sign up, basically registration. Then basically we can define what is the flow. Uh, Cognito will send uh, messages to verify and confirm what we want to verify, in this case, the email. And then um, there it's all the, the configuration. And you can edit all this, but you can also do it as infrastructure as code. It's the best way to do it. So then you can replicate it everywhere. And that can be configured uh, when we are defining this user pool. Uh, then we have the messaging and these are all the emails that can be sent. So we can basically uh, configure who sends the email, what is the configuration and blah, blah, blah. We can also have the different templates for the different messages that are sent. So when we are getting the verification, this is the message that we are going to get. And uh, you can tune it for different languages or for whatever you need or with more information if you want. So this is pretty nice. So I'm not going to touch this. And then um, we have the application integration. This is the basically app clients. We don't have any, there is many. Uh, we have one app client, but we don't have any hosted ID UI. This is basically a web page that Cognito creates for you. And we don't need it uh, for now, but we could have it if we want. Then we have the app integrations, and here you can see uh, the app ID, the app client that we created. And if we click on it, then we can see uh, the configuration for it. So this is a very simple configuration, and there is the uh, hosted UI. And this is basically a page that Cognito creates for you with the uh, registration and sign up, so you don't need to create it yourself. I will write it by myself uh, in the demo, so uh, I don't need it. And finally, it's the user pool properties. We don't have any Lambda triggers or any workflows in, in this case. Then if we go to the federated identities or identity pool, we can open the identity pool that we just created. And here there is really not much <laughs> things that we can see. We can see how many authenticated or unauthenticated uh, methods we have been called. In this case, it shows the unauthenticated and then which um, is the different uh, user pool ID that we have been using to authenticate. And then the interesting part here is the edit um, identity pool, where we can see the names of the roles for the authenticated and unauthenticated that we have created in the CDK. Also, you can find the identity pool ID. That's very important. And one important thing to make sure that your guests can uh, use this is to have enabled access to authenticated roles. Also, you can configure here the authentication providers. I'm using the Cognito user pool, but you could have any of these uh, authentication providers that you want. And there is many things that you can configure. So now I can do register and I can register a new user. This is a web page I have developed myself. So there is nothing uh, rocket science, but when I press the submit button, it's calling the Cognito uh, API and I'm handling the, the messages uh, that the Cognito API sends. So all these are going to be uh, 
attributes in 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 my cognito user database cognito user pool and that's good and we can see that it's calling the cognito with some payload and everything is good and then i can do the confirmation i will get an email to my account you see that the email is the same that we saw in the user pool but it's very simple here is the verification code i just paste that in my confirmation page and then my user is now verified so this is very, very handy because I didn't have to implement that. I just basically do a registration and the confirmation is sent to me. Then I can log in and basically I can just put my username and password. And if they are correct, it will go to the next stage. And I don't need to implement the login configuration. I just attach an API to that button that says login. And that's all I need to do. And basically that's Cognito in a nutshell. So that's everything I wanted to show you today. If you want to see this in action, check my migrating uh, playlist. I leave you the description down below where in the next weeks is coming a video on how to do uh, use Cognito with the front end, with the back end, way more in detail. Now that you know the basic concept, this will be very easy for you to understand. And with that, I see you in another episode of Uber. Ciao, ciao!